Good morning to all of our Antioch streamers and those who are here in person with us. We welcome you to our third or fourth Sunday. I can't remember. Fourth Sunday here in August. My time is flying by. But we say thank you to God for keeping us thus far. And now let us stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now join us in praise and worship. Hallelujah. Now how many people woke up this morning feeling blessed? Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that again. Now how many people today rose and felt blessed? Hallelujah. Listen, if you did, sing it with us. Let me hear you say bless.
me hear you say he bless me. and every person here in person as well as those who are virtually. We thank you, oh God, for being a way maker, for being a present help in a time of trouble. God, we thank you. We praise you, oh God, for working it all out for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. We welcome your Holy Spirit in this place even as we come against any spirit that is not of you. We bind that spirit up in the name of Jesus as we loose your spirit and your anointing over our preacher, over our congregation, here and there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let the church say amen. COVID-19 cases in Georgia. Confirmed cases are over 236,000. Our deaths are almost 5,000 here in Georgia. Please continue to wear your masks and stay safe. And just a friendly reminder that our pastor has a new email address, vcsimmons at yahoo.com, you can see it on your screen, vcsimmons at yahoo.com. If you can send him a quick email to create a new contact list, that would be most helpful to him. Thank you. Let us say congratulations to our new officers, stewards, trustees, and heads of ministries. May your conference year be a learning experience and great success for all of you. Our quarterly conference will be held virtually this coming Wednesday, August 26 at 6 p.m. All officers are required to attend. The Zoom link is in your Friday updates and in Ms. Hardy's email. The presidential election will be held on Tuesday, November 3rd. Now that seems like a long way off, but it's only 72 days away. The last day to register to vote is October 5th. Early voting begins on October 12th. And for those of you who can, please, we are 
pleading with you to go to the polls to cast your ballot. The disruption of the postal mail is very disturbing to all of us. So please, for those who must vote by absentee, please drop off or have an immediate family member drop off your ballot to the election office in your county. If you have received a ballot but decide to vote in person, please take your ballot with you to the polls so it can be spoiled. There's still time to complete your census, so go to my2020census.gov. Antioch's Grief Ministry Support Group is held every Monday at 7 p.m. Tomorrow's topic is part one of the journey of grief. The class is ongoing, so you can start at any time. You can register on our website, in the Friday updates, or in Ms. Hardy's email. And for all the ways to give, Givelify, Cash App, PayPal, Wednesday drop-off from 3 to 5, or Postmail, Stay tuned following this worship service for the Sunday School lesson. Have a blessed week. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. Thank you, Reverend Higgins. To Reverend Stevens and Minister of Music, Brother Cord, and other musicians, and choir, a media team, Brother Chad, Brother Russell, Brother Thomas, Sister Nicole, all of our ushers and greeters, our Antioch COVID-19 Task Force, to all of our stewards and trustees, all of you who have taken your rightful place uh, during this conference year, congratulations. And we want to give a special shout out to those persons who have taken the emeritus status in the church, have served the church well, they have set the bar high, and now they take their place in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we thank you for all of your patience uh, during this season. One of the expectations that we challenge you with. It's the third one. About striving to be God focused and flexible in carrying out God's will. We challenge all of our officers and heads of ministry with that. But we want the entire congregation to also meet those expectations as best as you can. God focused and flexible in carrying out God's will. Thank you for your gifts. You have, have done a marvelous job and continuing to help us to keep our lights on and pay the bills. We thank you for that and we ask that you will continue to do so. Now, and during this offering time, many of you have already made your statement with your financial gift. However way you have chosen, to give we thank thank you for that and we also recognize <clears throat> and grateful and thankful for those of you who lack the financial means right now just want to remind you that God has not 
forgotten you and that God will turn it around for you. Let us take now those gifts that we have received, uh, we have given, and let the Lord bless it as only the Lord can. Here it is, O oh God, our humble gifts that you have blessed us with, we give it back unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are blessed and favored to have uh, one of our partners in ministry, fellow associate here at Antioch, to give us a word for today. She's uniquely qualified in that she's saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And we thank God for that, and that's the most important thing. But she thought it not robbery to go and get special training to take it to another level and she's trained so she not only has the burning but she has the learning and she got good enough sense to have a day job. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Uh, she, uh, she's one of those persons who are uh, on the front line, especially during this pandemic and working as an educator, a teacher, in the Gwinnett school system. Didn't I say she was uniquely qualified to come and bring a word for us today? And she is. She hails from the great state of Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri. And she's here for us today. She's a part of this ministry. And we look forward to hearing what the Lord has put on her heart to share with us. If you pray with her, she'll preach. You gonna pray with her? Amen. Well, after we have received another selection from our awesome music ministry, the next voice you will hear would be the Reverend Anita Spencer Stevens. Now let us do what our mama told us not to do. Let's get our finger ready. Y'all out there virtually got your finger. Say, preach up! Preach! Preach up! Preach! Preacher! Preacher! Preach like you're from St. Louis. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some glory in this house. We've come to magnify his holy name. Did anybody come to lift the name of Jesus? I said, did anybody come to lift the name of Jesus? Did anybody come to lift the name of Jesus on this morning? Hallelujah. Let's sing a familiar song or two. Glory to God. You know my name. Is anybody grateful on this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know my name. Hallelujah. Say, you know my name. You know my name. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful, Lord Jesus. You know my name. You know my name. 
Hallelujah. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me. Oh, how he tells me. I am his own. Heart. My heart. 
to the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Honor to my pastor, the Reverend Vandy Simmons, for another opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk and all of our partners here in ministry, all members, officers, Lottie Dottie, everybody. To those who are streaming, Grace and peace be unto you all through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Please follow me to Ezekiel, a few scriptures, and then we're going to jump to Acts. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 5, hear the word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley it was full of bones he led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley bones that were very dry he asked me son of man can these bones live I said sovereign Lord you alone know then he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them dry bones hear the word of the Lord now Acts chapter 3 verses 4 through 6 Acts 3 4 through 6 Peter looked straight at him as did John then Peter said look at us so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And for just a few moments, ponder the thought, the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, speak, your servant is listening. Dip me deep down into the riches of your treasure and wake me up and bring me up to be your mouthpiece in this moment. And now, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've been wondering, what's going on? Not just around us, but between us. Not just between us, but in us. As Christians, what are we drawing on to sustain us during this time? Where is the source of our strength? Now, in both sermonic narratives, God's power is made real by proclamation, first by the prophet Ezekiel and second by the apostle Peter. These proclamations cause the dead to be made living and the hopeless to be made hopeful. Why is that critical for us right now? Because the reality of today's church demonstrates that unfortunately so many of us have forgotten or simply never really knew what we were called to believe 
to live and to proclaim. The opening line of Jesus' first sermon found in Matthew 4, 17 says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, y'all, we have problems with words like repent and repentance and conversion and being born again. It's because we have to examine our own conscience and motives. We want to look, tell the truth, we want to look everywhere but to ourselves for the sources of our problems and our issues. Nations, individuals, and even the church resist self-examination and fundamental change. However, isn't that what the gospel is all about? The coming of Christ brings with it a call to repentance and to radical change. We are exposed for who we are by the claims of a sovereign Lord and call to complete redirection. Now in the Greek, the word for repent is metanoia, which literally means to change form, to turn the mind around, to take on a new identity. It means transformation of life that is more basic and deeper than our common understanding of repentance. We say the word with a sense of guilt and being sorry for something. Jesus uses this powerful word to describe the kind of change that must be undergone before we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. The language of change is so strong and demanding because the coming of Christ brings a new age and a new order and a new way of being. What is going on? Well, we are being taken from a valley of dry, dead bones into a new land which flows milk and honey. We are having taken from us all that causes spiritual death so that we may receive new life. So many times we're afraid we want to stay in the old ways, but we want to benefit from the new way. While we are not satisfied with the old order, we're not yet ready to give it up because our securities lie in them. And it is at that moment of indecision that we hear Jesus call us to the kingdom, a kingdom made up of new things, new disciples, new loyalties, new commitments, new priorities, and new attitudes. A new kind of community, a new humanity united in Christ and empowered by the Holy Ghost to live according to the character of the new order. Now, Ezekiel described the people of Israel as dried bones, a valley of death, an image of people taken forcibly from their homeland into an unwanted exile of foreign oppressive. Sound familiar? Israel is surrounded by death, death longing for their freedom, death of the power of their nation, death of their hope. So God asked Ezekiel an important question. Son of man, can these bones live? This question is a valid one even today. Death is all around us. Almost 175,000 dead in the U.S. 800,000 worldwide, death of an uncertain health as we have 5.5 million people diagnosed COVID positive, 23 million worldwide, death not knowing the long-term effects of what's really going to be going on, death of our economy, Millions upon millions, record high unemployment and underemployment. Death of our status in the world. For there are countries that will not allow U.S. citizens even to come into their country. Son of man, can these bones live? We must also answer this divine question. Our nation appears to be dominated with waves and cycles of injustice and violence, exploitation and manipulation, profit and power, self-interest and selfishness, hate and fear, loneliness and brokenness, and it all translates to some form of death. 
So can these bones live? The prophet Ezekiel wasn't real sure if Israel was going to be liberated. But guess what? God knew then and God knows now. The answer is given in both of the scriptures. In Ezekiel, it's dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And in Acts, Peter said, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk. There is power in God's word. And the Bible tells us that that word was made flesh in his son, Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is that if we want to experience the power of the gospel and not just recite some words with no impact and no change, there is a process, a way of being and a way of doing. To experience the power of the gospel, we first have to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to believe it. We have to believe that when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, that he unequivocally broke the power of death and hopelessness that held humankind hostage. We must believe that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We must believe right now in the midst of this worldwide pandemic, in the midst of multiple national crises, that Jesus came to give us life. And that more abundantly, we must believe it. To experience the gospel of Jesus Christ, we not only must believe it, but we must live it. We must walk through our own valley of bones doubt and depression and desperation. We must see our own dry and dead situations brought on by lack of trust, Mm -hmm. lack of faith, lack of belief in God. Mm -hmm. And then we must be willing to fundamentally change into that dynamic new creation God has called it to be. We need to live in a way that shows that the gospel is more than just personal morality lessons with a social reform. The gospel we live shows a new order and a new people. We are not holding on to the past, but living in a world that we decide we will proclaim an allegiance to the kingdom of God. That unlike everything else, it will never never pass away. We acknowledge that we are not of this world, but guess what? We live in it. And because we live in it, we are going to take our ballots to the election board box. Because we live in it, we're going to take our souls to the polls. Because we live in it, we will hold the powerful accountable. Because we live in it, we will be our sisters and brothers keepers and will wear our masks and socially distance. Because we live in it, we will fight systemic racism. Because we live in it, we will protest injustice. Knowing what the Lord requires to do justice, to love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Beloved, if we want to experience the power of the gospel, not only must we believe it, Not only must we live it, but we must share it. As a Christian community, we are in covenant relationship. We are the body of Christ. When the world is falling apart, we ought to be coming together. We should be showing irrelevance to those with power and money and status and by our active presence with the poor and the weak and the broken and unwanted, we show Christ in the earth. We in the Christian community, while the world is going through their cycle of death, it should have no dominion over us. The Christian community can show new possibilities of human life, new fullness, new ways of loving and living that can be achieved if we continually 
yield ourselves to Jesus. When the gospel is proclaimed in power, no caustic partisan politics, no racial discrimination, no mentally ill narcissistic man child, no weapon formed against us will prosper. No imp on earth or demon in hell can get to us. When we open our mouths and speak the word, Believing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the downtrodden are uplifted, amen. The disheartened are encouraged and the hopeless find hope. When we open our mouths and speak the word living the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can give out of our abundance, but guess what? We can give out of our scarcity because we know that God will provide all of our needs according to his riches and glory. When we open our mouths and speak the word, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, good news is proclaimed. In the midst of all the bad news that's going on, we have some good news to proclaim because there's freedom for the prisoners, amen. The blind see and the lame walk, amen. The oppressed are set free, amen. We are making a difference if we really take hold of the power of the gospel. We as Christians are called to share what we got. Amen, in 2 Corinthians chapter nine, it talks about what we do, we give generously, and when we do so, we just don't supply each other needs. We cause people to praise God. We cause people to be grateful. We cause people to say, who is the one that causes you to do that? We break that follow ground, and we toil the hearts of those who may not know him. In Acts it said, Peter said, I, I don't have silver and gold. I ain't got no money, y'all. I ain't got no money. But what I have, I give to you. Some of us got some money, amen? Some of us got some food. Some of us got some clothes. Some of us got a room and a roof and a gift of hospitality. Amen. Whatever we have, we share in the power of Jesus Christ. Because when we share, amen, it makes all the difference in the world. In the end, Antioch Church, community of believers and Christians everywhere, the power of the gospel must be lived, must be believed, and must be shared right now. The power of the gospel must be believed, must be lived, and must be shared right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen, amen. 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 And praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you for a powerful word. We are encouraged. We are encouraged. But the word would not be complete if we did not give an invitation to receive Christ in your life that's who the preacher talked about that's the proclaimed word at the end of the day will you live for Jesus by giving your life to Christ if you're here or there we offer Jesus to you. Right where you are, you can 
Look on the screen and you can see how you can let us know what you want to do. You can call the church and leave a message or you can email Reverend Higgins and we'll get right back in touch with you. We take it seriously to hear what your testimony as you give your life to Christ. We'll be glad to pray the sinner's prayer with you as you turn a new leaf on life. Maybe, maybe you're already saved. Maybe you're already saved and you're looking for a church home, a faith community. Then we, we offer our, our church home to you our faith community. We welcome you as we strive to be the church in the community for the community. If you feel that, why don't you come and join us? Maybe, maybe you just need prayer. Maybe that's your, you need prayer. And, and I think that might be all of us. I think all of us can raise our hand and say we need prayer. We need prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you, dear God. We thank you for this preach word. We thank you for the preacher. We thank you for the challenge that we welcome. Oh God, have your way. Have your way. Come into the lives of those who are lost. Those who are saved, help them be in a community, a faith community that they're working together. And then, oh God, there are those who are sick and shut in. And they have other major life challenges. We lift them up right now to you. We lift ourselves up to you. And say, Lord, have thine own way. For us, what we cannot do for ourselves. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. gospel of Jesus Christ then you must believe it you must live it and you must share it and now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and power and dominion both now and evermore and the church say Amen.